Good morning. Welcome. Glad you're here today. Um, as always, um, pop in and say hello in the chat box. And we have um, quite a bit to cover today. We're going to be talking about the color wheel, the three-in-one tool, and how to use them and, and make sense of them in your work. And then also we are going to um, look at value because for me that's where we're going to start. But I want to share with you for just a, a few moments the uh, pictures and stuff that popped up on the forum of people working through getting their you know stashes going through their stashes and finding their palette of fabrics that they're going to be using for when we start the blocks next week. Jane and Jan, thank you for for coming in this morning. It's good to see you. And another and a Jane. So Elaine, good morning. Good morning everyone. It's uh it's good to see you guys. We're getting we're getting people from all over the country. That's great. Hi Jackie. So let's take a look first at this image right here. And this was uh, laid out and this particular one was um, Paula had sent this in. And if you look at her greens and blues, she's got some purples in there and um, what I want you to really look at as you're doing this is in terms of lights and darks and those mediums in there. So good job, Apollo. That's going to be beautiful um, with that. So let's take a look at this one is Lynn. And this was Lynn's blue group, uh, blue and greens or the cool colors working with that theme fabric which is quite lovely it's gonna again a, another really good um and this is her warm colors over here on the side that the picture is a little bit smaller than the other one i'm not sure why that happens but it does and then let's take a look at that the one in the background, let's see, let me get rid of this one. This one was done by Millie and it came out really, really tall, but her theme fabric is, is at the top and just lovely. Uh, the, the colors are really quite rich and I think the background is, is black on that. But again, uh, you know, working with the warm and cool. So thank you for that. Uh, Let's see, I think that's what we had on that I that I got on the forum. So if you have, you know, you, you know, as you're working along and you have the capability of putting that up on the forum, I would love it if you would, because it's helpful to all of us to see how you're going about working through some of the issues and if you have questions or concerns about any of them. So thank you for sending those in, uh, Lynn and Millie and Paula. So the first thing that I would like to tackle this morning as we get started because I think it's when we're looking at our patterns at our blocks and the fabrics that we're going to choose to put into them is we need to look at the block itself and value because what I hope to share with you today is where you put your value changes the look and changes the feel of your your quilt overall and I know that many of us as we're getting started or starting out, and I know that I did it, I followed whatever was in the book or whatever was on the pattern that I had bought and that I was making for the quilt because it was a little bit easier that way. And then I moved to choosing my own fabrics, but I kind of kept, you know, if they used a dark fabric, I used a dark fabric or vice versa. It worked most of the time some of the time um but that's how you know we approach things and it's it's how we learn it's how we take our steps in that and it was when i started applying my color theory 
learning about value, taking a few classes, reading about it, that I began to see where I could make changes and a difference in that. So I do want to work with you today a little bit on value, and I'm going to drop um, my notes and things. But before we get to that, there's a couple of questions from last week's last week that I wanted to address on here. And somebody asked about when I talked about transition fabrics, where you have a fabric and you want to move to a different color, it's it's kind it's helpful to have in the fabric, the next fabric that you choose, both where you've been and where you want to go into that one fabric. So the transition is a little bit easier and it's not like, oh, I went from blues and greens and all of a sudden now I've got oranges but that you find a fabric with both the blues and the oranges in it so that that transition is smooth and soft as you move through that. So it, you, no, you don't have to have transition fabrics. That's just another element that you can use as you're, as you're planning what you're going to do. But not every quilt's going to have that, nor does it actually need that. And then the next question that I saw in there was, how many brights do you add to fall colors? It depends. Uh, it, you know, sometimes you don't add any at all. Other times, if you see that your quilt and your palette of, of fabrics is looking kind of dull, then you throw in enough. And uneven numbers is always helpful. Gives it some balance. Um, it helps your eye move across it so you can throw in a few fabrics that lighten or brighten it up and um, it does sometimes it only takes one fabric and other times it'll take more than that so you know again that is dependent and I hope as we build our blocks and we talk about this more and more as we go along that that'll make sense to you that's my hope <laughs> with that uh, why did you purchase the kit? Um, the kit was a starter to give you a sense of a place to go with a theme fabric. It gave you a few fabrics. It's not complete. I, I don't believe that you can, in fact, I know you can't because I've already been playing with it, create all the blocks that we want to create from that kit. You're going to need to add to it. And that was the, you know, the point of the color theory is, is a hands-on learning experience. So that's a place to start and then find in your stash fabrics that connect with it and go along with that. I think the kit is a wonderful place to begin. And you're going to, you're going to learn just as much as if you went to your own stash completely or use the kit as a starter point if you haven't done something like this before. So the, the starter kit is great. I'm using it. It was fun to go into my stash and I certainly was able to find plenty of things to go with that. Then someone asked that they had a theme fabric of their own and it had a little bit of black in the background. And the question was, does it mean that I have to have a black background when my quilt is finished? And the answer is no. That it could be, but it does not have to be. You can use another a color that's in the fabric itself. Obviously white, grays, uh, neutral colors, whatever. But it doesn't, just because it's there does not mean that you are limited to the black background. And we're going to have a couple of blocks and when we put the quilt together, a little bit more information in terms of that. So those were the questions that I ran across and I wanted to touch base with uh, this this morning. So value, the lightness or darkness of a fabric. I'm going to drop you down. This is pretty much what I'm trying to um, convey is that we have a very dark value and a very light value. This is a churn dash block and you can see that there's very high contrast to that. This is a block that most of us are probably familiar with but now I'm going to show you that where you place your value can change the look and the feel of your block. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put 
this right here and then I'm going to remove this and by making those little moves now I have a very different type of block that we're looking at because I changed where I put my value in the block. We can do that again by um, pulling our whites, putting a white back in here, and then I, I'm going to put the whites on the outside for a moment and then I want to pull in you know that uh, medium value and then I want to go with a medium light value And again, you can see that all of a sudden now my block has changed again um, to something very different because of where I placed value. I I have you know I can do an ombre effect that type of that type of thing. Now I'm going to pull um, my corners, and in those corners, I'm gonna go back to those black squares and now I'm going to change from this to this and I, I'm taking a little bit of time with this because I think this is where we can make or break what we're doing as as a quilt and you know let's just go away with the white and let's put in a medium dark in these sections or a medium light excuse me so we we've, we've gone from light you know the light to medium light to medium dark to another you know medium fabric and pull that out of there and put this one in there and that block is completely changed but it's still in that whole churn dash feel and so I you know want want you to see that value plays a significant role in how we tackle our our blocks and so as we work on this now one thing that I didn't tell you last time and that is because I wanted you to put your materials in a light to dark pattern on this one um, I worked a little bit of making the value not so not so wonderful on this so I, here is where I want to show you, you probably have a tool in your hand that'll help you with this whole value thing. And I purposely put certain fabrics in places that they're not, they're not the best places to put them. And I wanna show you. So if you have an, an iPhone or your own phone, I'm gonna go to my camera and I'm gonna find this picture and I want to show you that I took a black and white photo of this and I'll show you in just a second how to do that and hopefully you can notice a couple of things that I did value wise that if I had would change it up a little bit it would improve the look of this block if you'll notice all of these are fairly light colors and there's they're only on one side here i put the light to the left 
up here it's in the center and it's in the center here and that when when you play with this enough it starts to jar a little bit and even as I look at it here this is not okay there's something not quite right about it and this helps me see what that not so right about it is the bottom one I put the two lights in the middle I did an ombre here and here they're all the same value so I need I normally I would change that but I wanted to do these two blocks to show you that yes you can do it and you look at it and it's okay but it could be better and so how do I how do I do that let me find a picture for you here is picture I, I snapped of some of the fabrics so once you get to your photo go down to the bottom where it says edit and then there are three little dots in a triangle you hit that and move it over um, and I usually go to the mono or the very last one and it takes it removes the color from your fabric so we're not being confused by color anymore but now we have value and we can see how our blocks are looking or how our our fabrics and if we choose our fabrics with darks and lights and mediums prior to working on our blocks then we can get our blocks to look the way we want them to when it's all said and done so that's a tool that you have right um, most of us have it close at hand with you know it's around all the time and it makes it for a very good tool so on in terms of, of value so let me put that up there all right so once we get that lightness and darkness figured out then we're going to move to the color wheel we're going to move to the three in one tool and say so how does this work for me how do i get to where i want to go with my fabric so by now you should have figured out what what kind of a style you have what your personal um, palette looks like you should have been able to separate your fabrics into warm and cool because remember the blues and greens and the cool colors are going to recede into the background and your oranges and your yellows and your pinks and magentas are going to move forward so even the color now can work with you it, it along with value because that you're going to notice those reds and yellows and magentas and oranges first and those cool colors are going to be the supporting fabrics behind it so let's take a look first at and I got to grab all this I have so many things um, to share with you this is a large poster that I normally keep on my wall I, I don't have the the wall space here but it's it's not very far away uh, from me and it is CNT publishing on one side um, has pictures of different fabrics and how you move you know through the the tints and the tones and the shades and then on the back it gives you the formula for the different things that we're going to learn with our blocks such as analogous um, with complementary split complementary all of those mo monochromatic and so that poster is usually on my wall and then they came out with this one which I do have um, right here next to my machine and close at hand and this is very much um, close to the same as what the large poster is there's a couple of, of differences that I that I really like about it and that is here are our three fabric dye colors we have yellow we have magenta and we have uh, cyan I hope I'm pronouncing that right it's like a turquoise blue so we have our three dye colors uh, yellow um, blue and red uh, if you were going with paint dyes and paint colors these are those primary those primary colors 
and then we move into all of the other you know colors that we can make from them and it's endless because it depends on how much you know in terms of white or black or gray that you add to your your colors and so here we have our tints that's where they've added the whites and it goes from almost completely white into you know you get that yellow orange now when you get the secondary colors which are next to that is the secondary colors are two pure colors with no tint and no shade no black no white added to it and you get these pure colors in here which we call secondary colors then you get your primary colors which you add equal amounts of a primary and a secondary and then you start adding more tint more shade or you know shade to it tones with the grays and you get endless colors this one has been divided with with the the 12 colors so on the color wheel itself and then this part right in here is wonderful because it comes into those neutrals and it gives you an idea of the kinds of neutrals that work for your color scheme this one was from i uh, ordered this from a website um, meander website and i like this one too because it's been divided with the cool and the warm colors and then as far as your neutrals you know your pink beiges your orange beiges beiges your yellow beige your green beige and the same thing over here the green grays the blue grays and the violet grays and which is going to look best with the colors that you're using in your quilt and it'll give you a little bit better idea so when we're looking at those those grays and stuff you can see that they're on the cool side and when you want to go white you go with um, I never realized that there was blue white as opposed to off white and real white. But when you go to a paint store and you start looking at whites, it's just phenomenal how many different kinds there are. And the same thing with the warm fabrics, um, the beiges work really well with those warm colors because they they have that warmth in them already with your yellows your oranges your pinks and your greens and hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you so that when I am looking at you know darks and mediums and lights I have a tool there to kind of give me a helping hand so that I know where I can go in terms of value and I want to go darker dark and a lighter light, you know, so that I have either high contrast or if I just want a little bit of contrast, I know where I can go within that, that turn of this. The, you know, it's all written up here in the dye um, colors that are used for dyeing fabric as opposed to like acrylic or oil paints. Uh, so it's a little bit different because the colors are magenta, cyan, and yellow as opposed to yellow, red, and blue. All right, so that helps um, a bit with, hopefully with how to use that. And then I want to have you take a look at this mini one. Um, that you could carry along in your purse when you go shopping. This one too, and it, it has instructions right here of where your tints are. So white has been added to the center part and your grays um, are in, you know, these last couple as you're moving through, you know, your, your little, your little um, tool. And then your shades are the upper two. So you've got four boxes here so again tint tone and shade and up here is your pure color so those colors to be pure do not have any white or black or gray in them their their mixtures magenta is its own color yellow is its own and so is the the turquoise blue or the cyan 
then all these other colors have equal parts of one of the primary colors and the other color to get this. Um, so if you mix yellow and blue together, you get the green. And if you mix that green um, and yellow together, you're going to get yellow green. And if you mix the yellow and the blue together equally, you're going to get this aqua green. So that's how those secondary colors work. And then this in here and the circle in here are your tints, your tones, and your shades. On the back side, again, they give you the formulas for all the, the different blocks and and we're going to add some to this but the different blocks and the formula for and the colors that you're going to be looking for to get your analogous monochromatic complementary split complementary all of that and they give you five of the color plans right here on this page so it explains it for you it has the notes built right in and you have your little color wheel and this can fit nicely into your purse when you are going to the fabric store. And then the three-in-one color tool, yours may look a little bit darker uh, than mine on the front cover, but it's more or less the same. Mine is just old. And this three-in-one color tool has wonderful explanation in the front of it so you can go back and review it whenever. I know that I reviewed it a number of times as I got started um, with this three-in-one tool to understand how it could be helpful to me. So let's just take a look at this yellow for a moment. They have the pure color listed right here. So here is the pure color of yellow. Then it's tinted adding a little bit more until you almost get it down here to where it's almost white. So the tints are white has been added and it goes ombre. This direction from the pure, this has had black added to it until you get down here to a very deep green with uh, the black and the yellow. Then across from it you have the tones which are the shade um, or plus gray and you've got the tones put in here and then over here you've got tones with pure yellow and gray so the shaded ones the pure and then over here you've got the yellow tints with the black the you know the gray colors so you have your tones you have your shades and you have your tints. So when you're working in the quilt store, you can take this with you. One of the ways that I have found that this is extremely helpful for me is that the light is never quite the same in a store as it is in my home or someplace else that I've looked. So at home, if I'm gonna be matching fabrics, I will take my three-in-one tool and I will find the color that is the closest to what I have on the fabric in my house and I will mark it with a you know a, a sticky note or something so that I know when I go to the quilt store and the light is different because some quilt stores have very dark corners and very little light inside of them. Others have wonderful light. So it's it's always a mix. But if I know what that close, the closest it looked to in my house at home with the fabric to the light that I have, then that's what I'm gonna look for in the store that it's gonna come close to that because then the light is going to be the same. And I have found that to be pretty helpful to me. Then on the back of the cards, again, you have the, the game plans on the back side to give you a helping hand. So it's not as though you have to have all of this memorized, even though after you use this for a little while, you pretty much will have it more or less me memorized and you'll learn it. And it's it's a wonderful tool to do that uh, with. And then you have the other thing that's really nice um, about uh, mine here is I have circles, triangles, and squares so that I know what the fabric is gonna look like cut up. 
because some of the larger prints, when you cut them up, you've got big sections of the background fabric or whatever. And do I want that in my quilt? Is that what I'm going for? Or do I want that circle or triangle or square completely um, filled and covered? So I, I like um, having that. And then these are the Ruby Beholder and uh, they help you see the the blue and green will help you identify the the lights mediums and darks of the the warm colors and the red does it for the blue colors so uh, fantastic tools to use for helping you um, identify you know the value of the fabrics that you want to use and all all of these tools you can get in the um, shop on on TQS and you don't have to necessarily be a member to do that so I want to talk a little bit about fabrics themselves let me get back here a little bit uh, you know about the fabrics that you're going to be using and one of the questions that I get frequently when I am one-on-one -on -one in a class with, with students is that, that whole idea of do they need to match perfectly? And my answer may be different than you've heard before, but my answer is no. I think the quilt becomes more interesting if they don't completely match when everything is very matchy matchy and lines up in my opinion is that the quilt then becomes flat even if you're using bright colors there's just a a flatness about it that I don't particularly want I want that surprise in there I want that little bit of brightness or sometimes the dullness is what gives the spark in a quilt and that took me a little bit to learn that yes I can use a dull fabric to get my spark as well as I can a bright you know um, happy fabric because it adds a depth to your quilt and so learning that it's not necessarily brightness but it's depth that I'm looking for in my quilt so how to, you know building a well-rounded stash and I think a, a well-rounded stash is start with those 12 colors on the basic color wheel and then working at getting you know amounts of lights mediums and darks medium lights and medium darks in that and building your stash around that but then you know when you're when you're also building your stash in there it has things to do with character the size of your your fabrics that type um you know your, your the scale of your prints so small when i when i say that's a small print i'm talking that the the print itself is is one inch or less and from a distance you know six feet away it looks almost solid then a medium print the prints are in there somewhere between one and three inches and these are just random you know numbers um, not not you know put in stone or anything the um if you start putting and adding too many of the medium to large prints in a fabric, it can take away from the design, I think, unless that's the design you're going for. And many, like for example, uh, Jen Kingwell's quilts, uh, Kay Fassett quilts, um, quilts that have those large fabrics in it, all together now that's a style of its own and that that then complements one another and you can work it and that's where transition fabrics are almost to me vital for a happy uh, wonderful quilt and when you're you thinking about scale and size of fabric it's all about the end result that you want when you are finished with that there are geometrics, um, those straight lines, repeating patterns. Uh, it gives the quilt a little bit of stability, if you will. Um, that's the best word I could come up with. Um, there's a rhythm to the quilt that, that's added that gives a touch that the eye continues to move across and your eye doesn't jar at some place because there's lacking something or something's there 
that's not anywhere else in your quilt. And um, so mixing those scale, that texture, you know, uh, lines and, and geometrics and circles and swirls and all of that gives texture to the fabric and you need balance with, with, you know, your large prints or you need balance with your solids or reading almost solid. And so let me just double check here. And I want to look at a little bit, let's see if there was any questions on the uh, chat that I can answer. But if, if I don't see them as I'm just buzzing through here real quick. All right, so, uh, Dot has mentioned that value is as important as color. Um, for me, I definitely agree with you, Dot, um, but I even think value is even more important um, than color. I think color supports the value, and as you add those warm and cool colors and where you put them, you know, in the value slot will make a huge difference in your quilt. And that's, that's a great, great comment. Um, and Charlene talks about the color wheel and how much it is a help to her and that's awesome. So for a lap size quilt, the background, I know that question's been asked several times um, of me in terms of how much background am I going to need for a lap size quilt. One of the elements of this class is to help you learn to take blocks, or design for yourself and when we get to putting all this together part of that is you're going to be designing your own quilt um, you can you can do what I do or someone else if they put their pictures up on the forum but in in essence you're going to be doing your own now normally for a lap size quilt background fabrics can run anywhere from two to four yards and that's that means sashing, uh, added blocks, different things to that. So that's a really wide, very general comment to that. But as far as background is concerned, it's going to be really your decision when we come to putting the quilt together. This class is to help you learn color, help you identify different fabrics, understand value, and then um, the design element and putting that together. So I don't have a real solid answer for you, but I do know that most lap quilts, when I have background fabrics, I always play it safe. They'll say on the pattern one and a half yards, I'll usually get two because I, I can make mistakes and then I have a little bit of extra to play with and I always find reasons to use background fabrics and it will depend on your blocks and how you choose to design them as we go along your background could be scrappy uh, it could be many different things so my best answer to that question is somewhere between two and four yards and it will be your decision when we get to that point so i i hope i haven't frustrated you um, with that answer and again as you are working with color and playing with value and seeing how you want to create a block and and give it some depth I, I think that's still my best word for it 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 adds something to that I'd like you to take a look at patterns that you have look at quilts that you've made and start to figure out you know how that value plays within the blocks that you've made or the blocks that you see in quilts and patterns then, you know, I, I'm seeing it on the side of my eye over here, um, that way. The blue block is, is sitting up there and, you know, it, it kind of bothers me, even though I purposely made it so that it would bother me. But it does be, because it does, my eye doesn't flow. My eye stops at every place where my value is out of line. And, you know, 
could I use that those blocks in my quilt? Yes. Will I? I don't know. Uh, it will depend on all the other blocks and how they're put together. Or I may take it apart and switch those fabrics around if I decide to use that. The color wheel that I had that included the neutrals was from um, Shannon Brinkley. And it she has a, uh, you, you pay a subscription for her, um, I think she calls it a guild, meander guild, but she has, uh, but this was shannonbrinkley.com. So that's, that's who um, I ordered that from and got that. Uh, I don't even know if you still can because I did that a long time ago. So, but it is a good one. And at some point on the forum, I'll list those colors in terms of backgrounds or neutrals to add to that. So let me just double check. Um, I know that I went through value and I know that I went through that color wheel very quickly, but I'm going to be using them with the blocks that we make so we'll get some more hands-on work with that but this week i'd like you to to really look at the color wheel and look at your stash or the fabrics that you've chosen right now and look at you can use a medium fabric which can become your dark and a light and so it depends on who your name that which fabric is the neighbor and how they relate to one another in terms of you know the dark and getting the value where you want it and just play around with that and take a look at all of that because for me the unequal measures of color makes it very interesting um, and you don't always get that in a solid color, you know, and that, those are very popular right now. But you can do that with value again, and it doesn't matter what the, the solid colors are. Um, and then the last thing that I want to share with you is inspiration. Um, where do you get the inspiration for your quilts? And I want, I'm going to pop you down to my table again. And the one, one place is nature. I think that's the best place to do that. I drove over to uh, Livermore yesterday, and on the hillsides, right now the lupines are blooming like crazy. They're these blue uh, bush flowers. And then in between all of these were the poppies. It was fabulous. It was it was beautiful. And then the blue lupines, the poppies, and then all the mustard. And I just looked at that and said, you know, that's a quilt in the making with all the green grass and, and the chartreuse from a distance that it looked you could see um, from the mustard. And then I have magazine pages for, and some of the magazines, this is American Patchwork, and they always have a, a place for inspiration of a palette. So these, these palettes are, are awesome. Um, where you get your color inspiration and then this one is another page and they show you fabrics you know in your dishes in you as you're decorating you know different fabrics and decor stuff um, so this is all people quilt magazine and again you can see the flowers and what's really lovely is um, I was at the nursery a few days ago and looking at just the the groupings of flowers and the different shades that you could get and 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 tones and and colors and then i remembered that i had this um going to the farmer's market and getting cherries and you can see the colors that that come out then the the covers of magazines um, are the other place i don't know if you're aware that in a magazine if you look in the front of it it will give you that they have an art director and i think one of the jobs and i actually looked this up to make sure i was telling more or less the truth one of their jobs is coordinating all of their material in the magazine to a color theme and the the advertisements and stuff don't necessarily follow that because that's from someone else but as you page through a magazine you'll you'll note that every article 
that that that's from the magazine that's producing it will have pretty much the same color scheme. So on the front here, you can see this is a very cool color scheme. And what adds the spark and the life is going across the color wheel and adding um, that pop of flowers. And one of the things that, that I like to do when I go to the grocery store is I go to that magazine aisle and I look just across and until a cover catches my eye. And I will look at it and see what theme is there and, and answer that question for myself. Why did that strike me? Uh, then if you, this is a paint palette, but again, what a soft, lovely quilt that would make in turning that into, um, you know, the from the dye instead of the paint color wheel into the dye one. Then this are these color swatches from, you know, the, the paint store. And here they have the... Um, pure color that they're they're working with the main color the black has been added on this side or grays and the tints are over here and so that's even very helpful in terms of where I want to place my value and I will cut these up and use them as I showed you last week but all of these um, I really like them because they did have the you know adding white to it and adding the dark so you know you can kind of get the feel of where you want to go and of course the brochures that they all have is um, there too this one was really kind of neat this Martha Stewart living uh, there's the palette and then at the bottom of this let me see if I can get it up into the even using ribbons and threads and little baubles in terms of decorating with you know the hydrangea and pictures and different things but again it's a color palette that we can that we can get and then um, American patchwork and quilting I don't know if they still do um, but they used to do these these color inspirations with that this one um, was how I built uh, my son and his now wife asked me to do flowers for their wedding and they got married in September and they wanted as she was trying to describe this to me so I wanted to find something to make sure that I was on the same page as she was with it saw this real simple um, cover now I love that bouquet and I love those colors they're they're mine all the way um, so I took this to her and she says that's exactly what I was looking for in terms of color because she started out wanting to get married in September but wanting all the spring flowers. So how can I get some spring flowers, looking flowers, into a fall? And of course the ranunculus and the dahlias and that um, worked for both of us. So there is, you know, different ways to get things this was an, in another magazine and again adding a sparkle with the chartreuse this is navy blue back here um, you've got the turquoise and the pebbles but a very little bit of added that orange color in the background just really made this you know piece of artwork uh, really shine in that and so you can find inspiration in a lot of different places you know, if you if you struggle with finding, you know, what you're looking for, or if that color wheel makes no sense to you, that's a great way to um, look for and find inspiration in the things around you. Uh, you know, when you're out shopping, uh, the supermarket, your magazines, uh, book covers, all of that is a great place for inspiration in terms of that. So I've this was a long class. Um, someone said they clip pictures of colors um, that they like in order to help themselves and absolutely I have a couple of these file folders where I keep putting things that I really like and that says to me oh I, I think I can do something with that those that color um, scheme or whatever and so um, again, 
is as you're choosing your fabrics and getting excited about next week with doing the um, the first block we're going to be doing I think monochromatic and again this is the book um, the, the quick and easy block tool and this is where I'm choosing the blocks that we're going to be using for uh, making uh, the you know the blocks and talking about all these different um, color theory uh, ideas so you don't necessarily have to have this but I think it's a wonderful tool to have in your in your stash anyway with your your library of books it does have four different actually it's five different sizes of blocks they've already divided for you it makes that really easy you don't have to do math and I know that that was one of the reasons why I love the book because uh, math gives me a rash uh, that's what I say because I, I I mess it up. I math in me is is not there. Um, that's why I was an English and history teacher, and that and I avoided science and math. Um, anything over fifth grade was not for me. So, anyway, next week we'll be back. We'll tackle monochromatic, and we'll start with making our blocks. So have your palettes post on the forum, ask your questions there. I'll get back to you, check in, you know, at days. I don't always get it the same day that you put it up, but I'll get there before the next Saturday. So we'll see you then. Have a great one. Uh, make sure you tell the ones you love, you love them and do something that makes you happy. And we'll see you next week.